I always wanted to know what the truth was. I always really wanted to know what the truth was. And um, in this training, we're given a really simple um, practice and support network to allow us to discover for ourselves what the truth actually is. And um, it's fascinating to see how many ideas throughout my life I had adopted about everything. <coughs> everything. Lots and lots of ideas, lots and lots of information. And as, um, as I grew up and continued to live my life, it's just more and more information. You know, there's endless information out there. You go onto the internet, you could just click link after link for the rest of your life and you still would have a million more links that you hadn't clicked probably every second. So there's endless information there. So how do we discover which information, which knowledge is true, which is useful. And so we're introduced to something about ourselves in this training that we get to discover for ourselves and discover the truth and the value and the benefit of that for ourselves. Now for me this was key because I was actually a little bored and a little um, tired of hearing about other people's ideas and opinions about who I was about what life was, about what everything meant, about what I should be doing with my time, how I should be acting and behaving. I wanted to know for myself. And um, I thought, and I'd been trained, that the way that I would come to understand myself and other people and the world and how to behave and how to act would be by thinking about everything. But what has become clear is that thinking about everything is basically just... Um, there's a term we use in this training that just simplifies everything. So rather than having lots and lots of terms for all of the different kinds of information or descriptions or perceptions like thoughts, emotions and sensations, we just simply call it all data. And that just keeps it really simple. We don't need all of these complicated descriptions to understand the fundamental nature of reality, to know the truth of reality. And um, with the introduction to the vastness, to the bright shine of our own intelligence, just by stopping thinking for a moment, recognize for yourself, when you stop thinking, just for an instant, what remains? What's there when you stop thinking? There's an alertness, there's a cognizance. There's the capacity to know. This has to be identified in our own experience. The already open nature of our own intelligence, naturally present, so impossible to turn off, inseparable from all of this data, all of the data are simply the bright shine of our intelligence and none of which can be found to have an independent nature separate or apart from this basic state the open intelligence that's looking through your eyes right now that's hearing everything you're hearing experiencing everything you're experiencing now from the perspective of recognizing instinctively moment by moment that this intelligence is naturally present and inseparable from your current perception. Whatever you're thinking, feeling or sensing, this is the evidence of the openness of your intelligence. We simply relax and allow that flow of experience, that stream of data, just to be as it is. Conventionally, the way that we've been trained is to collapse our intelligence into the descriptions. Um, so a good example would be um, Depression. Um, I was um, I was running on the beach this morning, um, something I like to do sometimes, and um, just just really really enjoying running on the beach, and you know just really just enjoying that sensation of running, and um, starting to feel a bit stronger after running for a couple of weeks now, and. Uh, you know, that blissed out feeling, just the head back running, and then suddenly crunch. 
and I felt probably a shell, I'm not, not quite sure what it was, and it went right through the bottom of my foot. And, um, and then there was the immediate reaction, the rush of energy, a few choice words. <laughs> and, um, and then just complete relaxation and openness. And then saying, okay, well, what, what should I do? I know, I'll, 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 just, um, I'll just wash it in the sea and then I'll, I'll dry it in the sun before I walk back to my room so I don't get the sand too much into it. And then hobbled back to my room and washed it and dried it and put a little plaster on it and, um, and then carried on about my day. And um, that's a not very interesting story, is it? <laughs> But the reason that I'm telling that not very interesting story is to illustrate the difference now in becoming really certain in my own experience that none of my thoughts, emotions or sensations have an independent nature. I can simply allow them to be as they are for short moments. Because the difference with something like that, when it happened to me before I was introduced to this actuality of reality, the spontaneous self-release of the here and now, the naturally present brilliance of intelligence that was the basis of everything I was experiencing and I'm experiencing right now, was that I could relax and just simply see what needed to be done. And previously, something like that happening would have not just ruined um, my day, but it would have ruined many days as I sat and I thought about how I couldn't run on the beach anymore, I probably can't go swimming anymore for a while, oh no, I'll just have to sit in my room and just sit there and be miserable and sad and think about all the happy people on the beach and secretly be quite pissed off that they were so happy and I couldn't go to the beach anymore because of this tiny cut on my foot. And, and what this is a really tiny example, but it just illustrates the difference in recognizing that there is something about us that is com completely stable and the basis of all thoughts, emotions and sensations. This is the brilliance of your intelligence. This is the intelligence that holds all of the knowledge in the entire universe. Oh, <laughs> how could that possibly be? Now, this is great. I love this question. and. Um, one of the things I'd learned was that what I am is this little fleshy being here. This is, this is what I am. I'm this little fleshy being that runs on beaches, that cuts its feet, that gets depressed, that is born and then dies and has all of these strange experiences somewhere in between that and that, that's who I am. And that just seemed to be true because everybody else was just saying, well, that's who you are, that's who I am, and so that's obviously true. But, but is that true? With this simple practice of short moments of just relaxing, the need to focus in on all of these descriptions, to collapse my intelligence into these descriptions, and instead for short moments allowing intelligence to be open, which it already is, the vastness of your intelligence encompassing everything that you're experiencing right now, everything you can hear, everything you can see, all of your thoughts, your funny emotions, the slight pain in the bottom of your foot. Whatever it is, it's already included in the vastness of your mind, naturally, without you needing to do anything. And so rather than collapsing it into one description, we can allow it to remain open as it is. This is its natural state. And from there, everything is seen clearly. And I began to, from that vantage, really reassess, if you like, and I think this would be the difference between reflection and indulgence, is reflection is seeing everything clearly from the vantage of wide open intelligence. Just seeing everything as it is. Indulgence is collapsing into one particular story about something like um, I'm a smoker. That was a good story. I, I had that one for many years. I'm a smoker. That's just who I am. You know, that's part of my fleshy little being. I'm a smoker. And 
from the vantage of allowing these descriptions and these stories and these ideas and belief systems that I've been telling myself for so long that just simply seem to be true, to be as they are and recognizing them, them as being inseparable from this vast brilliance of intelligence, then there was a different perspective on all of them. Then everything switches. So rather than being a victim to every passing thought, emotion or sensation, so really giving it this power over me, really feeling that my um, experiences of the day, my circumstantial data could really dictate how I behaved, how I acted, how I um, interacted with the world, how I presented myself. Instead, what I discovered is that I can allow all of these thoughts, emotions and sensations, these streams of data, just to be as they are. And when I do that, they self-release naturally. That's what they're doing anyway. It's impossible to hold on to any thought, emotion or sensation. Where was the thought that you had a moment ago? It's just gone. And so really seeing that this is actually the truth of reality, that here I'm empowered to see this for myself, that there is this intelligence that's naturally present. You can just take another short moment of just stopping describing everything. There's this blazing intelligence that is potent with intelligence and power. There's so much energy there. And when I collapse my energy into the descriptions, then it just goes all over the place. And um, sometimes that can be expressed as anger, sometimes that can be expressed as depression. But when I leave it as it is, that same energy is available for me to use in whichever way I choose to use it. And from the vantage of completely open intelligence, the perspective is naturally what will be of most benefit to myself and other people. Because the vantage is all-inclusive, all-encompassing inclusive of myself and all other beings and all other intelligences. Now this is wasn't, wasn't what I'd learned. This wasn't what this little flesh being was supposed to be. I was supposed to have this limited, narrow perspective. But is that true? Is that actually true? And here the invitation is for short moments to repeat this simple instruction of allowing everything to be as it is, just relaxing your descriptions and recognize the vast openness of your mind that is clear like sky. And then to repeat that recognition throughout your day and to test out what difference that makes. What perspective does that allow you access to? How does that affect the way that you relate to your own thoughts, emotions and sensations? How does that affect the way you relate to challenging circumstances? It doesn't mean that you don't feel everything, but you will discover a power and a maturity and a clarity that is always on. It's always available. And when you come here and you speak to people and you hear the stories of them going through challenging circumstances and accessing the brilliance of our intelligence, the brilliance of your mind to find solutions, to know exactly what to do in each time, place and circumstance that will be of most benefit, then it begins to dawn on you, well, perhaps the stories that I've learned about myself and about what we are as human beings aren't as, uh, aren't as fixed as they thought they were. And the way that all these stories are opened up is by recognizing them to be inseparable in each short moment from the vastness of mind. And this is something you can do. You can test this out today. You can take short moments whenever you naturally remember, allowing your intelligence just to remain relaxed and open. And then the habit is that then we'll collapse into another description, another story, and be off on that. You know, I, I'm a smoker. I, I don't have any control over it. Um, I really like smoking. Um, and we're off on that whole story. But I really shouldn't smoke. I can feel it's killing me. Oh no, I've had another one. <laughs> At any point along that train of descriptions, cutting them at the root by going directly to open intelligence is what will give you 
the clearest and most powerful perspective on actually what you do want to do. And to take that on a moment by moment basis is really empowering. And then there were some stories that I had been telling myself for so long, like, like the one about smoking, for years. It, it wasn't a story, it was true. And it seemed like I did not have any control over it. But by coming and putting my time and my energy into what would support me and empower me to recognize that the basis of all of those descriptions, all of them, the, the, the craving, the indulgence, the revulsion, the guilt, all of these were also the dynamic energy of open intelligence. All of them, without exception. And more and more I was empowered to decide what I do want to do with this incredible energy that I have, that we all have access to. What are we going to do with this energy? And the way to empower yourself is to simply participate in this training. It's so, so simple. I see that whenever I'm collapsing into any description, any data stream, whether there's um, whatever it is, any story, any idea about who I am, how I need to be, the conventional descriptions or the unconventional descriptions, if I feel like I'm a victim, then that's simply because I'm not relying on open intelligence and relying on the support that will empower that with all circumstances, with all streams of data. And so we have an incredible support network here. The short moments you can take with you anywhere. You can put in your back pocket and go off to the beach and take your short moments there. But you could also take um, one of the books. And the texts are so powerful. The texts just shine open intelligence. By reading these texts, open intelligence naturally becomes more obvious. By participating in the written trainings, you'll discover what is already the case for you. That open intelligence is naturally present, always accessible, and provides you with exactly the correct and true information and perspective in any circumstance. How you can be a powerful human being. Seeing how this energy we have can be used to be of benefit. And then there's a trainer who you can come to and you can speak to about your experience, and they will simply share their experience of outshining data. And this is why this is so powerful and authentic, because we're not talking about somebody else's experience, we're talking about our experience, allowing you to see your experience as it really is. It's not about learning knowledge, learning facts or figures, it's about the direct instinctive recognition of the nature of reality. Again and again, bringing it back to that recognition, training it up. And then there's the community, just to spend time with other people relying on open intelligence. So inspiring. It's this constant alarm ringing to remind you of open intelligence. Just being reminded again and again, I can relax and allow everything to be as it is. I was caught up in this story, but I'm going to bring it back to the simplicity of a short moment again. Brilliant, I'd forgotten about it. Thank you for reminding me. So the simplicity of this training is its potency. The simplicity is its profundity. But it only works if you participate.